then Jesus shows us that he suffers with us and but he also leads us to eternal life to uh, to restore life in the dead areas in our lives to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries let us now call to mind our sins I confess to so my God and to you my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault through my most grievous fault therefore I ask blessed Mary ever virgin all the angels and saints and to you my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the Lord our God may almighty God have mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Whoever believes in me, even if he 
the sisters, the pastor, sent word to Jesus saying, Master, the one who you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not the end of death, to end in death, but it's for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha, her sister, and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found the pastor had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, the one who is coming into the world. He became the curb. Jesus told him and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, should not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? Jesus, so Jesus returned again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone laid across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be the stench. He has been dead for four days. Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took the stone away. Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said it, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Dead man came out, tied hand to foot with burial bands. His face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mark Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We have two beautiful images of Jesus in the Gospel today. The first one is the image of Jesus greeting. Now, this is one of the first three instances in the Gospels in which Jesus wept. Once he wept over Jerusalem because of his lack of faith. He also wept in Gethsemane because of fear and sorrow. And here, he wept before the tomb of Lazarus, his friend. Now, my dear friends, we have here uh, a tender image of God in the midst of grief and death. And he seems to be saying to us that it's all right for us to feel pain, to feel lost and uncertain, 
to feel anger and sadness, to feel human because of our loss and suffering. And we will see this image again uh, in, uh, of God again when we celebrate Good Friday in two weeks. How uh, Jesus suffers carrying his cross, dying in Calvary for us. And we are reminded that we are not alone when we suffer. Because Jesus, through his incarnation, has become one of us, one with us. In God, in Jesus, God shares our sorrows. There is, however, a second image that also comes to mind in our gospel today. And that is the image of Jesus standing outside the tomb of his friend, calling out a man who has been dead for four days. And he says, Lazarus, come out. And with those words, life is restored. And I can't help but think that Jesus is addressing those words not just to Lazarus, but to each one of us uh, who is listening to him today. You know, Christ is saying to us, come out. Come out from your personal tomb, from your darkness, from your depression, from your sadness. Come out into the light. Leave your stance behind. Free yourself from the bandages of sin. Come out and I will restore you to life. It is an invitation for us to step out of our darkness and to hope for light and life. Trusting in the life-giving power of God. To believe that God has not abandoned us at our tombs, at our graves. To believe to continue to trust and have faith in the Lord in the midst of the pandemic or crisis in our lives. To continue to hope in God's saving power because Christ has won a victory for us. The prophet Ezekiel in the first reading today echoes the same invitation to us when he says, Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them. Oh, my people. In the Gospel, Jesus says to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes, believes in me shall live, and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Martha, will you believe this? And we pray, my dear friends, that we can also respond to Jesus with those words of Martha. Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. We are now going to do the fifth and the third scrutiny. Chosen ones of God and candidates, please come forward with your godparents as your names are called.
Felicity Garcia and godparent sponsor Anita Martinez will be receiving baptism. Robert Garcia and his sponsor Yolanda Garcia will be receiving the sacrament of baptism. Noemi Diaz and her sponsors Cecilia Milano and Maria Nunez will be receiving the sacrament of confirmation. My dear elect and candidates, we also ask we ask you also to pray that the Lord may enable you to die to all those things which are opposed to God and to live a new life in Jesus. As a sign of your desire for a new life, we ask you to please kneel and pray. For the rest, let us stand for the general of we pray, my dear friends, that the grace of the sacraments conforms us, cons conforms them to Christ in his passion and resurrection, and enable them to triumph over the bitter faith of death. That faith may strengthen them against worldly deceits of every kind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. prayers. That they may all have a horror of sin, which the life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. That we too at Easter may again be confirmed in our hope of rising to life with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For our parishioners living in a deceased, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and none spoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray. Father of life and God, not of the dead, but of the living, you sent your Son to proclaim life, to snatch us from the realm of death, and to lead us to the resurrection. Free these chosen ones from the death-dealing power of the spirit of evil, so that they may bear witness to their new life in their recent Christ. For he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And they will be stand. My dear elects and candidates, although you cannot yet participate fully in the Lord's Eucharist, stay with us as a sign of our hope that all God's children will eat and drink with the Lord and work with his spirit to recreate the face of the earth. Amen. Amen. And they all be seated.
the Almighty Father, may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our benefit and the of his soul to church. Hear us, Almighty God, and have it instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend. And as the eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we attain. Holy, holy. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave him thanks, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, the Lord, and confess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chance of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we be married to be called heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. To live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the signs of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are his call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my world. Don't say this word. Please stand. Let us now pray the spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. 
Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your head for God's blessing. Bless the Lord your people, who long for the gifts of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down to you and remain with you forever. Yeah.